chaos and anarchy on the streets of Mtata as taxi violence leads to blockaded roads and the looting of trucks. This vote is enormously important because it is likely to be the first time that the ANC falls under 50%. The first votes have been cast for the 2024 elections in today's special vote. And thousands of people buried alive in a landslide in Papua New Guinea. Hello, I'm Jane Dutton. This is Eyewitness News. Taxi violence has hit the town of Mtata in the Eastern Cape. All major entry and exit points have been blocked and people warned to stay at home. Trucks have been overturned and looted. The SANDF and the task force are there to try to take back control. This violence is reportedly in response to police taking firearms from one of the taxi factions stationed at a local hospital. Both sides of the R61 as well as the N2 have been blockaded using um, heavy duty trucks as well as some burning tires. This has unfortunately affected the operations at the Mtata airport as well. So therefore those who may be flying into Mtata are advised to rather delay their travel time until the situation is back under control. I feel very good and I'm very happy we're doing this. Tell us about uh, where you vote in. You say this place has a very special... Oh, my grandfather was the first, one of the first guys that was a, 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 cho a pupil that came to the school when it started, 19 and six, 1906. And the whole family after that followed him. We are like five, uh, what do they call it, five um, generations now. With polling stations now open across the country for special votes, the Western Cape's former Premier and ex-Cape Town Mayor, Helen Zille, is among those to have cast an early vote this morning. This vote is enormously important because it is likely to be the first time that the ANC falls under 50%. And it's entirely predictable that it will never get above 50% ever again. So it's a watershed election. It's the end of an era of overall majorities for the ANC. The IEC says voting will be smooth in KZN. That's after the commission confirmed that one of its offices was threatened and some individuals entered one of its warehouses without authorization, accusing the commission of vote rigging. Two Omkonto Wesizwe members have been shot and killed in Katlehong, south of Johannesburg. Police say the shooting incident followed a fight last night involving members of the MK party and the ANC at the Twala section. Police spokesperson Brenda Muridelli says one MK member died on the scene while another on the way to hospital. A firearm and a knife have been seized from the crime scene. The arrested suspect will appear before the Palm Ridge Magistrate Court tomorrow facing two counts of murder. The Border Management Authority has denied 28 Bangladeshi nationals entry into the country after they were found to be in possession of fraudulent travel documents. The tourists were intercepted on arrival at the OR Tambo International Airport on Saturday following an intelligence-led operation on a flight from Dubai. The BMA says 27 of the Bangladeshis had fake visas while another didn't have one at all. The Commission of the Border Management Authority, Dr. Michael Masiapato, has commended the interception by the BMA immigration officials. Commissioner Masiapato also emphasized the need for continued efforts in confiscating illegal documents, especially at this critical time of elections. Western Cape Premier Alan Windy says there doesn't seem to be a need for a judicial commission of inquiry into the George disaster that killed 34 people earlier this month. Windy at the weekend responded to calls by the ANC to set up a judicial inquiry in his position as Premier while also accusing the DA of trying to protect those responsible. The Labour Department, police and an independent structural engineering firm appointed by the provincial government are all probing the cause of the tragedy the country's worst ever building disaster. There are four inquiries, so that's going to be interesting to see if there's any difference in the four inquiries. Wendy also accused the ANC of cheap politicking on the disaster, saying those responsible will be held accountable.
More than 2,000 people are feared buried in a Papua New Guinea landslide that destroyed a remote highland village. The hillside community in Enga province was almost wiped out when a chunk of Mount Mungalo collapsed in the early hours of Friday morning, smothering scores of homes and the people sleeping inside them. The landslip was reportedly continuing to shift slowly, posing ongoing dangers to both the rescue teams and survivors alike. And that's it from me, Jane Dutton, and the rest of the team. See you for more again tomorrow. Eyewitness News. In touch, in tune, and independent. For the latest, log on to ewn.co.za or ewn.mobi.